You know, I feel like my head is crooked. And it might be crooked the whole video. And that's just something we're gonna have to deal with. I've been trying to make my wallet fold all day. Cashing in my dreams, big payout. Underneath my money tree, big say. Hey freaking flies, welcome back to another video. Happy New Year. I'm Brandon, I'm a guy who flies. Taking a step from the flight attendant content to hop over to another topic that you all know I'm really passionate about and that is planning. For those of you who have been following me for a while, you know I have quite a few things going on in life and I have my hands in many different buckets. I wear many different hats. The only way that I'm able to keep all of that together is by planning. Well, you know, <laughs> as type A as you can hope to be and as, as detailed and planned and prepared as you think you are, there are still moments in time where you just lose track of things and you might fall off the bandwagon just a bit. This is an example of that. Here we are today, middle of January, making a video that should have been out in the middle of December. The way life is life thing, you all might not see this till February. And I'm gonna be okay with that because sometimes you cannot let perfect be the enemy of progress. January 1st is like the hallmark of starting fresh. Like if you see new year, day one, day one, day one. But January 1 does always not have to mean starting everything new each year, in my opinion. Taking my own advice, I'm giving myself grace. Let me serve as your example of what it looks like when... Let me serve as your example of what it looks like when it might not start right away, but you eventually get to it. Enough of me rambling, let's hop into the video. I was actually very late ordering my planner for this year, but after some research, I decided I was gonna switch brands. No loyalty over here. <laughs> but this year I am going with the Hemlock in Oak 2024 weekly planner. I actually am falling in love with this brand very, very quickly. Hemlock and Oak is a woman owned brand um, based in Canada and they are all about providing sustainable stationary materials. So, so much of the packaging and the products are recyclable and they are reused, um, eliminating the use of plastic. So I really, really love that. Included in my order was this free set of task stickies. And in addition to the planner, I also ordered the monthly tabs. All right, so let's get into the planner. It really is a sophistication for me. So I ordered the weekly planner because I'm in love with vertical weekly planners and I ordered it in the black vegan leather. Love that for me, so on brand. When I tell you this is like a book, like it is a book. So it measures about seven by nine inches it is 224 pages so when i tell you it is solid it is solid and the paper weight is about 80 pounds so it's really really good quality paper again all of the packaging is printed on 100 percent recycled fibers and the recycled fibers are manufactured with low impact renewable energy resources so when i tell you sustainability is on lock let's get into it planner does come with two ribbons, one black, one in the antique gold. In the opening of the planner, you have your ownership page followed by the index. All of the pages are numbered, so it goes through some of the year-long pages in the beginning followed by each of the months. Then you have a note from the company as well as kind of like a guide for how to, you know, get the most out of your planner. So it's really helpful to read. Then you really get into the meat and potatoes of this planner. It starts with a lot of reflection, identifying who you are, what you value, and how your understanding of self and your values can really lead to your goals for the year. And so then it takes some time to give you space to create several goals for the year. And then once you've kind of identified what goals you want to accomplish, it gives you the opportunity to kind of think about the habits, which are going to be some of those smaller daily and weekly things that you do. Followed by that is going to be a space for you to kind of plan for your ideal day. So if you were to think about the perfect day in your eyes from the wee hours of the morning all the way to late at night, what would it look like? What activities would you be doing? What types of things would you be getting accomplished? As well as just a general note taking space for you to keep track of any bucket list or things for the year. There's a two year calendar spread. So the current year of 2024, as well as next year of 2025. 
before it moves into my favorite part of the whole calendar and that is the future log. So there's two different types of future logs in this pl planner. This first one is a horizontal space where you have the actual calendar for each month and then there's space off to the in the margins to take notes. You'll notice that most of this planner is uh, grid, gridded. So all of the note taking spaces are in grids. I absolutely love that. And then there's a second future log and this one is done vertically so you have each of the months in vertical bars and uh, there's a space by each day so two different types of future logs and I already know I'm going to use both of these one of them I'm going to use for my content and the other one I'm going to use for all of my dates and anniversaries and things of that sort next page you have all of the major holidays again this is a Canadian brand so you have the Canada's major holidays as well as the US major holidays and I love 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 that they included both Juneteenth and Indigenous People Day like that made my heart smile so after those first 32 pages then we actually move into the planner for the year the way it's organized each month begins with an overview page it has some guiding questions for you to kind of reflect on such as what boundaries will you set for yourself this month, list three ways that you can carve out time for self-care, what intentions do you have this month, what milestones are you focusing on, what habits do you want to cultivate this month, are there any barriers, it gives you the opportunity to decide the frequency for that habit as well as a space for a habit tracker to follow that one habit throughout the month, and then any rewards you want to set for yourself, as well as a whole sheet for note taking. The monthly overview is followed by the two page monthly spread space on the left index for note taking. That is gridded. It is six by seven squares for each calendar. It is a Monday start. And I also love that the calendar is embedded in the month and they're not like all in the front. For the weeklies, you have the monthly calendar at the top with the box around the current week. There is a space for your focus and intentions as well as tasks. You remember the free task stickies that they included where they actually can fit really here in any week that you need additional space. But what I've also realized is that they can actually fit over any particular day as well. I don't know, maybe to cover up mistakes or if you just need additional um, to-do lists or task space. This is a vertical weekly planner. Again, it is a Monday start. Each of the days, there's a box under the day for additional note taking and then the time frame goes from 6 a.m to 10 p.m but there is space underneath each day so if you wanted to extend your day or you wanted to use this space for additional note taking that is possible in light gray lettering along the top you do have any major holidays and the days that they fall on as well as the moon phases and at the bottom it tells you which week of the year you're on and the date range for that particular week I'm really excited to dive into this planner. So it follows that same kind of pattern for each of the weeklies. And then at the end of the month, every month you have a review page where I ask you to write down three memorable moments this month, what gave you energy this month, what drained you, a lesson, thought, or growth moment from this month. And again, additional note-taking pages before you get into the overview for the next month. And then it follows that pattern all the way through until the end of the year after December because it's just a 12 month planner then you move into a yearly kind of reflective pages so after your December review it's going to ask you to look at a year in review and it's going to give you more probing questions which future me will dive into as well as space for looking ahead which is essentially your planning for 2025.
this future log is an extension of my brain, so I'm making notes about the type of flying we have each of these months. I'm kind of jotting in the benchmarks of our school calendar, as well as any cultural observances that happen each of the months before going in and starting to pencil in some of my trips and things that I already have planned and major events for the year. I really do like the idea of answering these reflective questions, so I invite you all to join me in this quest. You can either keep your answer to yourself, but if you're comfortable, drop down in the comments and let me know what boundaries will you set for yourself this month, or what is one way you plan to carve out time for self-care, or what is a, an intention you have this month, or what milestone are you focusing on? Comment down below and let me know. You would think this is like my first time ever using a planner because I'd be so hyped to get started and then there's so much hesitation to like write on the pages but you kind of just have to like do it and I feel like it's never perfect especially starting out in the beginning and it's a livable document so it's just going to keep changing and you just have to be okay with that so I kind of don't really know what's happening this upcoming week so I left it very sketch but I've started and I'm proud of myself for that. So here is our final flip through. <laughs>